Hi, this is Linda Tui from the Dover Public Library, uh, AKA Library Linda. I'm the outreach librarian at the Dover Public Library in Dover, Ohio. Today, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the country of Madagascar. So, Manoa Ahana, hello. Madagascar is officially called the Republic of Madagascar, um, previously known as the Malagasy Republic. There's about 26 million people that live there. It's one of the poorest nations in Africa. In fact, 90% of the population lives on less than $2 a day. Madagascar is a large island off the coast of Africa in the middle of the Indian Ocean. It sits right off the coast of Mozambique. It's about twice the size of our state of Arizona. It's the fourth largest island in the world. The history of Madagascar is pretty um, distinguished um, because of the isolation of where it is. At one point, scientists believed that there was a giant supercontinent uh, named Pangaea, and that the continent started to shift apart. When the shift occurred, Madagascar actually shifted with Asia, and then it broke off later. Um, that is one of the reasons why a lot of the um, plants, animals, are more similar to what you find in Asia than what you find in Africa. Madagascar is quite a unique place and during the late 1600s it became known as a pirate haven. Um, Captain James Myson was a pirate and he formed a community on an island known Il as Ile St. Marie. And this community was called Libertatia. And uh, this is where the pirates went and um, had a little vacation after they'd been looting and pillaging all the ships that have gone through the Indian Ocean. Because that was the main trade route from Europe to Asia. They went past the coast of Africa into the Indian Ocean to Asia that way. So they bankrolled their community um, by their spoils of what they got from other ships and they were able to trade what they had stolen from other ships and um, they had a pretty much a gentleman pirate um, community there and they even started bringing families and uh, retiring there. They built a couple forts on the ends of the island so that they could protect them and they lived there quite happily. After Captain Myson had left, they moved on to another gentleman pirate who ruled the island or was in control of the island. His name was Adam Baldridge. He was an English pirate and he had fled Jamaica where he was wanted for murder and ended up um, on the island of Ile St. Marie. And he ran the island pretty strictly to the point where um, it was a very prosperous community until Mr. Baldridge got a little bit too greedy and he decided he was going to get more involved in the trade industry. Unfortunately, the trade industry that he wanted to get involved with was the slave trade and who he wanted to trade were the um, native people on the island of Madagascar. He met his demise shortly after that because the natives revolted and um, did away with Mr. Baldridge. That's one of the reasons why on the island of Ile St. Marie, you'll find the only pirate cemetery in the world where only pirates are buried. Madagascans had a series of queens known as Rana Valona. Uh, Rana Valona I was um, queen of Madagascar from 1828 to 1861. She took over after her husband's death. She wasn't a very nice lady though. 
Um, when her husband was king, he had allowed missionaries to come in um, to the island and a lot of the people there converted to Christianity. Rana Valona didn't like that. So when she became queen, she had all of her own people who had converted, she had them all killed. She didn't kill the missionaries, she killed all the people. And of course the missionaries fled because they feared for their own life. After her death, um, her niece took over and that was um, Roshana. And she was only queen for a very short time before Rana Valona the second came into power. She was queen from 1868 to 1883. And um, she remembered when growing up, her uncle had the missionaries in there and she went to school with the missionaries and she loved that. So she actually invited the missionaries to come back and welcome them with open arms. She is solely responsible for Christianizing the whole entire court of the Madagascan royalty. The last Rana Bologna, Rana the Bologna the third, she became queen in um, 1883 after the death of her aunt. Um, unfortunately, this was not a good time on the island and Rana Valona III had actually sought help with the United States. She would send gifts to our then president Grover Cleveland. However, the United States either wasn't able or wasn't inclined to help them military, militarily or diplomatically. So unfortunately, Rana Valona signed a treaty with France, which ended up not being a good thing. Um, after they signed a treaty with France, France came in and basically claimed territorial rights over Madagascar. They laid claim to land that Rana Valona and her husband, the prime minister, felt that it was unjustifiable, unjustifiable encroachment. They fought for their lands and France came in with 15,000 troops and within a year they captured the whole entire island and annexed it. They exiled the prime minister and they took the queen to an island out in the middle of the Indian Ocean. After a short while that she was out there, they moved her to Algeria, where unfortunately she was never allowed to return to Madagascar and she died in Algeria um, in 1917. So the island was ruled by French from 18, 1895 to 1960. That is why French is one of the national language that in Malagasy. Baptist, Lutheran, and Catholic are the current religions that most people um, partake in, in on the island of Madagascar. And the largest group of ethnic people on the island are the Marina people. They are the people who lived in the Upper Highlands, um, native people to the island. These people have some strange beliefs. In Madagascar, they have a ceremony where families exhume the remains of their dead relatives, rewrap them in fresh cloths, and dance with the corpses in a sacred ritual. They call this famadihana, the turning of the bones. And it takes place around various towns and villages and it's to commemorate uh, the deceased. And they do this every two to seven years. Each family has their own uh, time and place that they do it. And um, that it, it is a huge community uh, event um, and festivals are celebrated because of this. The national sport of Madagascar is rugby. Um, it was introduced in 1890 by a French railroader. And their team is called the Maquis. Other things they like to do in Madagascar. Um, Marangi is a type of hand-to-hand -hand combat boxing. Um, little bare knuckles, kickboxing combination, very brutal sport. But they seem to like 
the very brutal sports because they also like the tolanombi, which is wrestling of the zebu cows. Um, it is very, very popular in regional areas. And it used to be, it once was, a rite of passage for young men into adulthood. The capital and largest city of Madagascar is Antanarivo, or Rivo. Um, it's home to about 2 million people. Um, daily average temperature somewhere between 69 to 81 degrees. What's really unique is that it sits at an elevation of 1,208 meters or 4,199 feet above sea level. Um, it's an island country and it has the, the highest cap elevation of a capital among island nations. Most island nations have their capitals near a seaport, um, but they are way up into the upper areas of Madagascar. After the French left, um, Rivo quickly grew, but it created a problem because they didn't have adequate clean drinking water, a sewage system, public health care, nothing. The French left them in a bit of a, a mess. Fortunately, um, the president of Madagascar, André Radzo Ilina, um, was president of Madagascar from 2009 to 2014. And again, he took office again in January 2019. Um, when he first became president, he was only 35 years old and he decided he was going to do something about it. He's the youngest president they've ever had and he's 45 now, but he's been very instrumental in making sure they get clean drinking water, um, sewage systems and reduce crime in the country. He has instilled some communal pumps where people can get fresh water and um, public toilets throughout the area so that people can go and um, have a toilet to use. Majority of the roads in Madagascar are unpaved with uh, many of them becoming impassable whenever there's a rainy season. This is also something the president is trying to work on. He's actually asking for donors from other countries, businessmen and countries to donate to the infrastructure um, of their country. I certainly wouldn't want to be driving on some of these roads. Madagascar can be divided into five general geographic regions. The East Coast, the Terrence-Tana Massif, Central Highlands, the West Coast, and the Southwest. The East Coast consists of a narrow band of lowlands, um, and it is not a very safe coastline. It's a very straight coastline. Um, it's not a good place for boats or swimmers. And um, one of those reasons is there is a very large number of sharks in that area. And it's very rocky. The Terrestanana Massif region is the higher mountainous area um, in the northern area of the island. And the Central Highlands range from eight to 1800 meters in altitude. And um, that is mostly a uh, hill area, hilly area. And the West Coast, you'll have more of a sedimentary formations, um, more safer harbors, shelter from um, cyclones. And a lot of pirates like to be on this side of the island. The southwest region includes um, a plateau and a desert area. Um, not much rain down there. This is the highest mountain in Madagascar. The Moromokotro uh, stands about 2,876 meters or 9,436 feet high. This here is called the Singzi Ba Mahrihaha Nature Reserve. It is a forest of limestone spikes. 
some about 50 miles inland from the west coast and it is utterly impassable. It is believed that there are areas in this um, nature reserve that has never been seen by the human eye before. Um, these limestone spikes are so sharp that if you run your hand along the side of it, it actually can cut, your, cut the palm of your hand. According to Conservation International, 17 countries are considered megadiverse, which means that the number of um, species that are found there are found nowhere else. So over 70% of the 250,000 wildlife species that are found in Madagascar are found nowhere else in the world. 90% uh, of the estimated 14,000 plants native to Madagascar are found nowhere else in the world. Sadly, more than 80% of the forest has disappeared since 1950, leaving irreplaceable species in danger of being extinct. Some of these species are the Madagascar tree boa. The female of this species actually gives live birth to her baby snakes. I am not a snake lover. I'm not happy to hear that they give live birth to snakes, but I know some people like snakes. These snakes are about 15 inches in long when they're born. They live in trees, shrubs, shrubs, near streams, rivers, swamps. Also a team of scientists discovered while they were on the island, what they are calling a blind snake. Um, this snake is related to snakes that they found in India. Also, the leaf-nosed snake lays itself on a branch. It's got this odd-shaped nose and it camouflages, makes itself look, look like a branch or a leaf on the branch until an unsuspecting frog or reptile comes up and they pounce on it. Researchers discovered a new snake in Madagascar and named it the ghost snake. It's pale gray. Um, they had never found this snake like this before. And one day they were walking along an open path and there it was. And they um, identified it in 2014 as a snake that has never been seen on Madagascar before. The Madagascan mantilla frog reaches a body length of 21 to 22 millimeters, roughly the size of a thumbnail. They are being sought after by pet stores because of the cute markings on the frog. But unfortunately, um, if they are taken, they will become extinct. Its cousin, the golden mantilla, is one of the most threatened of the amphibians in all of Madagascar, um, partially because of its bright color, but it is poisonous. And that bright color tells its predators that it is poisonous. The last frog over there is the tomato frog. It name suits it because it's bright red, looks like a tomato, lives around the tomatoes, likes garden areas. Um, one of the th unique things about this frog is it has a, a secret little slot behind its, between its nose and its eyes. And when it's attacked, it secretes this solution, this sticky solution towards the eyes and the mouth of its predator. And it causes it to burn just like if you were, if you were to get sprayed by pepper spray. It doesn't kill or or maim anybody it just burns and um, that's its protective um, thing that it has and uh, once it sprays somebody in the eyeballs they let it go and they are able to hop away there are 346 species of reptiles found nowhere else but madagascar including the biggest chameleon by weight, it's known as the Parson Chameleon, and the smallest one, the Dwarf Chameleon. Um, the majority of the chameleons are illegal 
it'll, it'll legal to export them. Um, the Parson Chameleon is one of the ones that a lot of people are trying to get a hold of. Uh, the Malagasy Giant Chameleon is the chameleon that is largest by length. And the Panther Chameleon is the most colorful. Um, widest ranges of color by variations of all the chameleons. And they're also sought after by reptile keepers and traders. Chameleons are known for changing colors. Many believe that it's because they're trying to blend in with their surroundings, but now scientists are saying that they change due to their moods. Here's a giraffe weasel, weevil, I'm sorry, a giraffe weevil, strange looking insect um, found in the forests of Madagascar. He's got a really, really long neck and the males use these necks, necks to help build nests and they also compete with other males during mating season. They also can sneak up on their prey by going up over top of them and attacking from the opposite side. And the other critter here is called the Saint Satanic Leaf-Tailed Gecko. Um, disguises himself because he looks like a dead leaf and he'll hang off of the side of the tree until he waits until moths or bugs come up and then he can grab them. Here's a comet moth or the Madagascan moon moth. It's a moth native to the forests of Madagascar. It has a wingspan about 20 centimeters or eight inches and um, making it the world, one of the world's largest silk moths. And the flated leaf bug, um, as you can see there, the pink ones, they're called plant hoppers. They suck the sap out of plants. Um, they also use vibrations to communicate um, by vibrating the plants. Um, they can communicate with their mates um, or with ants. They can communicate with the ants because the ants tend to the nymphs. Those are those nymphs that are white and fuzzy up there. Um, those are the um, what you see before you actually, the, these um, bugs grow their um, wings. Madagascar is home to about 250 different species of birds. 44% um, of them are found nowhere else but Madagascar. That fuzzy white owl up there is called the Madagascar owl, only found on the island of Madagascar about 50 centimeters high, making it the largest owl on the island. The bluebird over there is called the blue kawa. Um, he's a member of the cuckoo bird family. Um, he'll get about 19 inches tall, weighs about the same as a chicken. And um, everything on him is blue. His beak, his eyes, his feathers, and his feet um, and the skin under his feathers are also blue. Uh, unfortunately, um, they may, may go extinct because of um, hunting. When the French were there, they used to export the bird and um, put them in gilded cages for the French elite. The Malagasy rat is an endangered species due to habitat loss and um, slow reproduction. This rat can jump three feet straight in the air. And then this other little guy, cute little guy, he's the lowland streak tenric. He's related to the shrew, but acts more like a hedgehog. But he can't curl itself up into a ball to protect itself. What he does, though, is he makes those little barbs stand up on end, kind of like a mohawk. And then he actually jumps towards the... Um, whoever he's feeling threatened by. And those little spikes have little barbed ends and they'll stick to his attacker. Then we have the ring-tailed lemur. He's only found in Madagascar. He's the most popular of all the lemurs in Madagascar. Currently, there are 103 living species of, Madag of lemurs in Madagascar. Um, the majority of these are classified rare or endangered. Unfortunately, 16 of them have already been wiped out since human arrival. Lemurs are primates. Um, the little guy up there on the top, he's known as the Nai'ai. 
He is um, com considered one of the strangest of all the lemurs, all, all the primates. And uh, that's because he's uh, nocturnal, but he also has um, incisors that are continually growing, which is really unique among primates. He's got really large ears and he's got a, a, a really long middle finger um, that's kind of skeletal looking. And he uses that as a sensory organ. And over there on the right, you'll see the Shifak. Um, he's also known as the dancing lemur. Um, he lives in the trees. He's arboreal. And um, he can jump horizontally 33 feet from one tree to the other while he re remains vertical. Um, if he wants to jump, go from one tree to another, and it's more than 30. 33 feet away, he'll go ahead and get down on the ground and he will dance across the ground to get to the next tree. Doesn't just walk like any of the other ones, he dances like Fred Astaire. As I mentioned earlier, that east coast of Madagascar is full of sharks. There's great white whale, bull, and tiger sharks. Um, it is ranked eighth in the most deadly place for shark attacks. Madagascar is the third large, largest coral reef system in the world. Tolaria cor Coral Reef off the southwest coast. They also have a few smaller coral reefs off the northwest coast. This right here is known as the octopus tree. It is a unique plant where it is a succulent and a deciduous shrub at the same time. So it's got spikes like a succulent, but it also has leaves that it will lose. This is the baobab tree. It's a deciduous tree related to the hibiscus. Um, this was also known at one point to be the tree of life for the Madagascan people because during um, drought times, they are hollow and you can find water inside them. This right here is Darwin's orchid, um, or the Christmas orchid, or the Star Bethlehem orchid. It was first discover discovered by the French in 1798. Um, it took about 21 years um, when Charles Darwin said that it was propagated by a moth, and it took 20 21 years to find out that this is a unique orchid just to the island and it was propagated by this moth. Madagascar is the main supplier of the world's vanilla and cloves. 79% of all the world's vanilla fields are in Madagascar. And vanilla is the second most expensive spice in the world after saffron. Um, the price of vanilla, vanilla reached an all-time record um, a while back, and that was because of damages to a plantation in Madagascar. The price of a kilogram of vanilla beans currently is between $600 and $700 for a kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds, making it more than the price of silver. This is one of the reasons why some of the farmers have started putting tracking devices into the stems of their crops so they can track them if they were stolen. Cloves were used since the Middle Ages for training, trading because they were used for medicine and cooking. Uh, considered the ninth most expensive spice in the world. And Madagascar exports about 20 metric ton annually for a value of $134.99 million a year. The Malagasy have um, closer roots to Asian people than they do in Africa. Um, and a lot of their food is more Asian in nature. One of the things they eat the most of is rice. They eat it about three times a day. And uh, when you're talking to someone from Madagascar, remember, they are not African. They are Madagascan or Mangalese. This is one of the things they like to eat, Malagasy fried rice. Um, 
It is a staple in their diet. They add carrots, sweet corn, bok choy, onions. They'll put in some meat, eggs, shrimp, um, and it's seasoned with, you guessed it, vanilla and cloves. They also like to eat or drink ranobala, which is a rice drink where they have um, cooked some rice and let it actually burn in the pan and then they add a little bit more water to it, steep that like a tea, and then they drink it cold. Ramazava is a traditional meat stew that they like to eat there. It is considered their national dish. And um, lots of green vegetables and spices are eaten with that. And then kopa, which is um, their native dessert. It's got mashed bananas, vanilla beans, ground peanuts, um, all rolled up into banana leaves and boiled or steamed. Other things they like to eat, they have an abundance of zebu cattle there, 19 million are found throughout the island. So they eat that as their beef and seafood is very popular also and very cheap. They eat lots of lobster, shrimp, uh, squid, tilapia, because it is so readily available. Last thing I wanted to share with you, there were um, some sapphires that were found in Madagascar. Um, back in 1998, and it created a sensation in the gem world that was similar to what the gold rush was in California in 1849. And by 2007, Madagascar became the world's leading producer of sapphires. The country currently provides half of the world's supply of sapphires. And they vary in cost from $200 per carat up to $2,000 per carat, depending on the quality. And no other element in the world is harder than sapphires, except for a diamond. That's all I have for you today. That's all I have. So I would like to say thank you, misaltro, and goodbye. Valoma tumpoco. Have a great day, and thanks for, for listening.